Uh, good morning to all of you and a very warm welcome and thank you for joining on a Sunday morning. I am Uday Shetty. I volunteer in organizing and moderating these educational sessions. Let me start today's session by saying a few words about ISP India. ISP India is a not-for-profit organization registered as a charitable trust in India. We serve pharmaceutical professionals by creating a platform to share knowledge, impart training through educational sessions like this one, and by creating opportunities for networking. Networking opportunities, I'll speak. Uh, India understands your professional need to help you with our complimentary pharma best practices webinar series. Each session feeds a leading subject matter expert. The topics cover critical and relevant issues in pharmaceutical manufacturing, quality, and technology. These webinars are available to all pharmaceutical professionals all over the world. We have hosted 41 sessions in the last six months or so. And today's session by Dr. Damodaran is the 42nd one. We are pleased that with these complimentary 41 sessions, we could reach about 15,000 pharma professionals all over the world, most of them from India, who attended our sessions live. We reached another 15,000 professionals through recordings of these sessions. Information about these webinars is available on our website, ispindia.net. You can register for all the webinars which are planned in the next three to four months on this website. The website also has a link for our ISP India forums. I said we create a platform for networking. So this is the platform for networking. You can visit this website and you can join our forums if you're not a member of any of our forums. These chat groups are there for discussing technical subjects with this few words let me turn to today's session today we have a very interesting and a very hot topic for all of us that is how to handle human errors in pharmaceutical manufacturing and we have a very knowledgeable subject matter expert dr m damodaran dr damodaran is a senior vice president Global, uh, global Quality and Regulatory Affairs at Sci Life Sciences Limited, and has more than 26 years of experience in pharmaceutical industry in companies like GSK and Renbaxi before Sci Life Sciences. He was a contributing author of the ISP Good Practices Guide, Technology Transfer Small Molecule Case Study Number Three, Development to Commercial at CDMO. Dr. Damodaran's presentation will be for about 60 minutes, which will be followed by a Q&A session, which will be for about 30 minutes. Please ask your questions at the end of the presentation. You can type in your questions in the questions tab of your control panel. With this few words, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Damodaran to make his presentation. Doctor, over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uday. And uh, I would like to thank ISP and Dr. Uday for this uh, opportunity to present uh, uh, my experience uh, to the industry uh, colleagues. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, we are going to talk about a very important topic, which is bothering us uh, in today's uh, scenario. If you look at the history of uh, uh, pharmaceutical inspection history, and uh, from 1995 to 2005, for the Indian industry, it was a golden period. We filed a lot of DMLs, we have got uh, approvals. And uh, through inspection also, we a lot of uh, approvals we got. From 2005 to 2012, we got uh, started getting observations in terms of a documentation uh, uh, aspect. So, uh, but, but it was not very severe. From 2005 to 2000, uh, sorry, 2013 to 2018, we started getting uh, you know, warning letters in terms of a data integrity. Indian industry learned, you know, how to implement data integrity practices, and we have, uh, you know, by and large, we come out of that. Uh, that's what my feeling. 
Now, from 2018 onwards, we are getting a in, uh, observations on the investigational inadequacy. I would like to divide this uh, part and you know, investigations into three parts. One is in the comprehension of investigation. Other one is uh, uh, root cause not identified. Third is actually root cause identified as a human error. These are the major areas agencies are concerned and giving warning letters and policies. Today, I'm going to restrict my talk only on the human error identified as a root cause. Um, this is a disclaimer. Uh, this is all uh, my own research and case studies and my experiences. Doesn't represent uh, any of the organization's practices and also doesn't you know, uh, replace any guidelines. It is uh, individuals, uh, you can use this as a guideline, but uh, uh, regulatory guidelines are the uh, one uh, you have to refer. So this is a disclaimer as a part of that we let okay. And this uh, today in 60 minute session, we are going to cover what is human error, regulatory expectations, warning letter for a three observations, what it talks about the human error, and uh, what is the challenge in human error? And uh, what is the workflow for a human error? And uh, human as a skill matrix. And uh, human errors in quality control. Example, there are a lot of examples. Most of the organization getting warning letters only in the quality control invalidations. And human errors in the manufacturing. Human errors categorization. How do we categorize this as whether intentional or unintentional? And human error investigations, how do we do investigate these human errors and corrective preventive actions? What is to be you know, put as a corrective preventive action? And uh, generation based competency evaluation and training methodology, way forward and conclusion. It's very difficult to cover in a one hour, but still I'll try my level best to cover. Although technological innovations and operational excellence have transformed the industries to a new benchmark, a lot of uh, things we automate like uh, in a manufacturing like a SCADA systems, uh, HMIs, uh, and uh, you know in quality control, limb systems, uh, everything actually we are automating and putting a lot of controls in, in place. But still human error has been emerged as a major you know, uh, cause for failures in the pharma manufacturing. Second is actually uh, in uh, human errors, uh, there are in, in a pharma industry, there are a lot of new processes getting introduced and complex procedures and complex uh, processes and the manufacturing plan changes. This all add to a failure. Although these all adding, but still there are good number of uh, deviations and failures are attributed to human error. In the re re recent regulatory inspections, investigations concluded with the root cause as a human error are challenged by the various regulatory agencies. Now, let's see actually what is human error by definition. It's a state of condition of being a wrong in conduct, judgment, and causing a failure in actions to achieve the expected result. We're expecting some results. Our condition actually is going to the wrong. When a planned sequence of mental or physical activities fail to achieve its intended outcome, an appropriate or undesirable, uh, undesirable human decision or behavior that impacts the quality and safety of the product. A common mistake by human beings and people. Error by an individual while performing the work according to the job responsibility. Any human action or lack of action that exceeds a system tolerance. This is a yeah, yeah, definition per se, you know, by various uh, you know, agencies, uh, various uh, you know, articles. Now, what, regulatory, what are the regulatory references are there in uh, um, human error? There is a PIC guideline which talks about uh, you know, human error. There is a European Union volume four is talking about uh, uh, human error. US FDA um, medical devices uh, guideline is talking about a human factor and usability engineering and there are some papers like you know pda and fda you know are available for our references now let's talk what they are uh, you know talking about the pig says actually where the human error is suspected or identified as a cause this should be justified having taken care of you know process 
procedures, system-based errors are not overlooked before concluding as a human error. Now, these, uh, you know, when you uh, uh, when you give a corrective priority action, and uh, uh, the effectiveness of the corrective priority action should be monitored, assessed, to not to have a repeat human errors. The same is the case with actually the European uh, European uh, agency also. They, they are also saying the same thing about uh, when you uh, you know uh, assign a human error a root cause, you have to negate. You should consider whether it is not related to the process error, procedure error, or system based error before concluding into uh, concluding into human error. Now let's discuss something about actually our worry trees and the warning letters uh, given to the organization where human errors is uh, uh, mentioned as a cause. So one of the warning letters, uh, the warning letter says, I'll read out only uh, the, the highlighted portion. It says actually your awareness of high percentage of rate of invalid OSS trust results without appropriate investigation. That means it's an inadequate investigation in the cause of it. And also there, the company is also acknowledged actually and uh, taken action. However, still uh, the percentage has not come to the level which is expected by the agency from 74 to 41%. The contributors or major contributors are human errors. Apart from that, actually, the instrument column and method errors. So, which very clearly says inadequate investigations are the root cause is the uh, and uh, action taken has not given an effective result. In other um, uh, four eight threes, there are a lot of multiple uh, you know multiple laboratory incidents happen, which is lacked you know adequate scientific rationale for the root cause determination. In a lab environment, there are you know a lot of lab incidents happens. It is not appropriately you know uh, investigated, and uh, there is no scientific rational for root cause determination. Okay, and those uh, uh, laboratory incidents, uh, incidents were attributed to contamination and laboratory errors. And uh, another warning letter it says actually investigation concluded that root cause was attributed to human error for not shaking the sample during the sample preparation. This is a quite common in the uh, industry in a quality control environment. The investigation concluded the root cause for the OIS attributed to analyst error. So this is all talking about invalidations uh, mostly in a quality control environment. Now going to the next one actually is uh, uh, in the warning letter, it states actually, um, for it, it states that actually the failure attributed to unknown laboratory error for the low assay value. Now, this is nothing, it's not, no, uh, this uh, assay is a very critical, our uh, repeat errors happens in our, uh, uh, the quality control environment. It, we are not, it, this organization has not provided a scientific justification for discarding and discarding the low result which was observed earlier. And in the other uh, uh, observations, if you look at the kappa, which has been, you know, limited to only retraining so this is a challenge most of the organization are facing is uh, for any human error we assign training as a only corrective preventive action which is not acceptable let's see in further slides what other things we can give as a uh, corrective and preventive action and uh, investing the last one is investigate unless the deviations from us it's a routine violation which is happening in the organization where they are not follow the STP, you know, um, for a longer period. Okay. Now, why the human error is challenged? Since we have seen actually what the regulatory says and uh, 483 warning letter, and uh, it's a challenge. Why? Because is it a right to assign a human error a root cause for a failure where the human factors are involved or something else is there? apart from uh, uh, the human to be drilled down and some companies are even strictly banned human error should not be the root cause it may be a other contributing factor we need to consider in a fda regulator manufacturing genuine human errors are happening because a lot of manual operations is involved and uh, but however actually the companies citing any for a most of the failures in the human error you know uh, instead of actually narrowing to you know, very, very less number of uh, deviations. 
Now, the next part is actually should intentional violation should be considered as a human error because it's a behavioral one. Let us discuss about the part also. In terms of a human error, look, if you look at actually the human understanding is a challenge, so it's very complex. Understanding of human itself is a very complex one. You know, how to behave and the, the skill of them is, is, is a challenge. And uh, human do mistake or error because they can. And why they do a mistake or error, either intentionally or unintentionally. If intentionally or deliberately, what would be the reason for the root cause? And if unintentionally, what would be the root cause? And during investigations of human error, what factors to be considered and put it in the investigation? And what COPPA to be proposed and how we see the effectiveness of the COPPA. Now, coming back to, we'll start with the human skill matrix. Let us understand human. In a society, it could be India, any other country, or in an office environment, or in a family, there are five kind of a people out there in a group. There are 5% of people are innovators, or initiators of any new processes. Yesterday, Dr. Uh, you know, um, has uh, talked about actually innovation. Okay. So these kind of a people you know, are very less in number to who bring in ideas or new things actually to the, uh, the world. Or it could be in the office environment, or it could be in the country, uh, leading a country, or it could be in the family also. There are 15 to 10, 20 percent of people bring those ideas into an operational procedure or processes. And there are 50 percent of the people, 50 to 60 percent, depending on the organization, are the doers, they do what has been told. And there are 10 to 15 percent of the people, they know what is to be done, however, they are negligent. They are actually the troublemakers. The troublemakers are there in every society, including in our families. And there are five to ten percent of the people are uh, passive in nature. That means actually they do not contribute anything to the society or the family. It's, we call it as a two punch and one lunch kind of a price. Okay. So in a, in a, this is the human. If you understand uh, the human, where he fits in, and it will be easy for to understand what kind of a job you can do. So this, we will come back to this matrix, how it is relevant to our human uh, uh, errors and how to take care of uh, this part. Now, coming to our uh, um, coming to our errors, possible errors in quality control. Today, there are a lot of errors possible. These errors actually in some companies, they call it as an incident, some companies are you know, invalidations. You know. Invalidations, there are two types. One is quality impact invalidations. Other one is non-quality impact validations. Non-quality impact validations are where, you know, when you start the analysis in the quality control or in a production, it doesn't have any impact on the quality. For example, in a quality control environment, there is a system suitability failure before even injecting the sample. It's quite possible, like, you know. And, um, you know, those kind of things is, you know, non-quality impact and, um, you know, in terms of a quality impact, where the samples are, uh, you know, injected, where the failure is observed, it goes into the OS, or ah, there is a split in the uh, peak happens, and you need to investigate during that. This is called a quality impact. The examples quoted are either a quality impact or non-quality impact, depending on the situation. Now, in terms of HPLC areas, I'm giving examples since actually that we are talking about a 483 mainly on the quality control cited by the FDA. I have given a lot of examples, covering examples in quality control. Also, I'm covering in a manufacturing. Okay, so this doesn't mean that actually you will have all this problem. There, are, I'm just only talking about only possibilities of human error. It may happen in your company. It may not happen, you know, uh, but only the possibility is there. So in, in terms of a mobile phase preparation HPLC area, the change in the mobile phase comp in, uh, uh, composition or low level of mobile phase reservoir, okay, you, you make a one liter or three, two liters of mobile phase system, you know, uh, four or five batches analysis where you got exhausted, exhausted with the non-quality impact invalidations or uh, incorrect calculation of mobile phase requirement, it, it goes way exhausted and you have to make it actually, you have to invalidate and do it or sometimes what happened the people you know unknowingly or they wanted to 
cut short actually they make a mobile phase add it uh, that will create a invalidation okay improper degassing of the mobile phase usage of validity crossed deteriorated mobile phase and a wrong for the mobile phase ph usage of different grade chemicals improper sonication of mobile phases although it is all mentioned in the stp there is a deviation which is happening in terms of pumps improper pressing of prime pump priming of the system or uh, interchange of uh, channel ports non closure of perger wall in terms of the injectors needle wash you have to do a needle wash now for each in the injection if it is not appropriately done it will be a, you know carry over of the impurities or a, you know in the assay there is a failure may happen and in column you know column washing is a, a big challenge and a detector detector pump energy check and uh, in terms of method creations uh, errors uh, wrong volume selection or uh, while position incorrect while position incorrect sample naming and uh, mm, incorrect instrument method selections this all you it, this is a possibility actually in terms of method creation errors although you create and apply the method there's a possibility while creation itself uh, wrong selection of a flow gradient aspiratic uh, you know flow volume wrong column uh, sample temperature wrong selection of wavelength wrong selection of end times this all lead to invalidation it could be quality impact and the preparation error this is a big challenge actually in the industry you know weighing errors or dilution errors wrong uh, selection of glass wares volumetric flash and pipettes into 20 ml 20 ml 25 ml was used like uh, improper sonication of the sample labeling errors insufficient volume of filling in wires in terms of gc area wrong selection of the carrier gases instead of helium nitrogen selection may relate to a baseline changes and uh, injector uh, not replacing the glass well uh, after the analysis over inappropriate selection of syringe not replacing the injector septa or uh, improper replacement of septa improper filling of glass well improper pressure of syringe in terms of calling wrong selection of a column column dimensions improper column pressing improper column conditioning again the sample set the creations like an actual you see in wrong injection volume while positioning and incorrect sample naming incorrect instrument method selection and improper selection of you know injection mechanism it could be a splitter splitless you know wrong selection of or on to one is to 100 or one is to 50 and uh, preparation errors uh, you know weighing errors again dilution errors wrong selection of uh, volumetric class and pipettes improper sonication sample labeling errors and insufficient volume filling this also happens a lot of time actually where you have to fill the volume and the uh, injection is not taking place or uh, improper uh, uh, you know uh, sample is in terms of a uh, uh, call fissure wet area that are uh, not ensuring the moisture trap this is a big it is a concern if not attentive it not change actually it may the moisture enter into that it will give erratic result improper condition of solvent medium and incorrect titan concentration false is missing blank value incorrect or missing sensor adjustment gas bubbles in the pipet this is a common one ineffective incomplete rinsing between the samples and careless weighing concentration of too low or high improper sampling contaminated values titration is electrically charged it's all depending on the molecule tube connection is not tight wrong ph or ionic ionic stand unfavorable arrangement of pure tissues okay in terms of a ph meter use expiring uh, expired buffers and uh, not in, uh, rinsing the electrode and wiping it to dry prior to use uh, storing storing electrode in distilled or deionized water storing of electrode prime in case of electronic pipette the electronic pipette uses also is making a lot of difference in the analysis in, in uh, incorrect aspiration position You need to use a 45 degree to take aspirin. This, uh, you know, suck the solution. Actually, if you don't do it appropriately, there's a possibility of error. Incorrect dispensing position. You have to do it in a 90 degree. And uh, tip holders are not wiped before use. And keeping the electrode pipette in horizontal position, laying your pipette down on the bench with the aspirated liquid inside the tip. in terms of uv spectrophotometer improper cleaning of cupboards uh, fogginess in the cupboards you know mirror fogginess and uh, scanning of standard stock in case in, you know for a final dilution standard 
and in terms of infrastructure, uh, poor uh, pellet preparations, and um, uh, you know, and uh, in terms of a polarimeter again improperly maintained temperature range as mentioned in the STP, um, and uh, uh, improper washing of cell and uh, non inserting the temperature in the probe, which may give very erratic results. In terms of XRD area, inappropriate selection of holder, it could be a glass, quartz, aluminum, inappropriate filling of sample holders, inappropriate cleaning of sample holders, and inappropriate pushing of holders in the sample stage. And in terms of the instrument method, uh, creation errors, inappropriate selection of two theta, uh, ranges, if you don't do it uh, you know, appropriately, it may lead to uh, the, you know, uh, different uh, results actually. Inappropriate selection of step size, inappropriate selection of scanning of rate, inappropriate selection of current and voltage. In terms of TGA area, again, wrong selection of uh, uh, pan make, uh, execution of analysis without uh, uh, tiring of a sample pan, inappropriate sample pan cleaning, this may lead to a contamination, inappropriate loading of pan, you know, initiation of analysis without ensuring instrument temperature. Again, method uh, creation error, inappropriate selection of glass flow, uh, gas flow, or uh, selection of temperature could lead to a failure. Sample set creation errors also may happen, wrong uh, sample pan number selection, wrong selection. Although you all automated, still this all uh, is happening. Sample preparation errors, you know, um, uh, touch a screen, if it is you know, uh, appropriately not used, then it will lead to a failure and processing errors in appropriate integration. And uh, in terms of ICPMS area and the auto sample is wrong tray selection, improper tracing of tray, and in terms of pump or non-replacement of Tigon tubes into peristatic pump, and improper uh, connection of uh, Tigon tubes to peristatic pump, and uh, plasma interrupted, no gas flow, sample set creation errors, as I earlier mentioned, incorrect Carson tube positioning, sample naming, and the file naming. Method creation is wrong selection of temperature and digestion, you know, improper cleaning of digestion. In terms of method creation errors, wrong selection of elements, integration time, internal standards, or element concentration. In terms of preparation errors in ICPM area, ICPMS area, weighing error, dilution error, wrong selection of glassware, also lead to contamination and improper digestion of sample, labeling errors, and insufficient volume filling in the passing tube, wrong selection of sampling standards. Now coming to our uh, mm, uh, uh, sample and standard handling area, this is a major concern in quality control. Labeling errors, wrong batch number, product name, storage conditions, validity of uh, standards, data states, and uh, while numbers, and mismatch of the label. In terms of handling errors, inappropriate selection of sampling tool, and inappropriate storage conditions, inappropriate sampling conditions for the hydro hydroscopic material, spillages, and usage of samples, rendered where retest was crashed, inappropriate packing of the sample, and uh, storage conditions, deviations during the transit. In terms of contaminations, inappropriate location of the sample, inappropriate cleaning of drying of glassware, and uh, uh, use for preparation, inappropriate cleaning of uh, sample tools, not using the selective glassware required for the molecule, segregation of the sample, uh, preparation area, inappropriate uh, rinsing of vials uh, during preparation, misplacement of glassware you know, during uh, preparations, and uh, handling of chemicals during storage. Now, I just give a one example for the, of uh, how complex it is in quality control. If you look at actually in a quality control uh, environment, uh, the sample preparation is very tedious and uh, complex. Uh, for example, you may weigh a 20 mg uh, of uh, impurities and standards of, of uh, standard A, B, 2, C, and, uh, and we need to make up into 20 uh, ml, 100 ml uh, flask, and followed by dilution 2, dilution 3. So, number of flasks involved is too high. This, if you look at actually for a single analysis, there are so many professional people have to be attentive, and we need an appropriate space to do that. And uh, Okay. Now, in terms of a stability and a stability study, pull out uh, mistakes, samples not uh, packed as per the procedure mentioned in the STP, overheating sample uh, during the simple initial uh, sealing, improper selection of sample packaging, and improper handling of sample after the pull out. So, improper handling of sample. So, this is a big challenge in the industry. Stability is a 
you know nightmare in uh, most of the companies you know material uh, if you look at uh, validation batches you keep three batches for all three conditions so all uh, out of all conditions probably in the 24 months the one sample failure you know we need to be a big chaos in the system and uh, we need to do investigation completely i know our root cause is coming out of it like this in terms of particle size improper alignment use of expired chemicals improper cleaning of the cell selection of wrong method in a progression okay and in terms of microbiology area colony counting errors you know entry in the software and in terms of sampling error for a water intra improper draining of water uh, while water sample collection improper rinsing of the sample uh, and uh, contamination while sampling in uh, for uh, from the gloves environment contamination like sample vapor coming in during sampling in the uh, in environment from the environment and the glass air contaminations and the transcription errors in terms of a manufacturing area there are a lot of operational misses like you know less quantity charging temperature excursion due to wrong utility operations filtered uh, spillage during filtration reaction wrong material charging improper mixing of a filter assembly non verification of the cleanliness of the charging vessel equipment before start of operation and uh, improper uh, phase separation residual volume and wrong estimate and uh, wrong assigning of the retest period shifting sequence change uh, shifting sequence change and wrong setting of units in the compression machine miss of step in the porting internal machines uh, setting and uh, you know wrong judgment and wrong calculations etc and uh, in uh, terms of signature missing of signature in the documents calibration miss do miss uh, and uh, labeling uh, errors um, not verified before uh, the material is used and electronic system entries Although we have done an electronic system barcode system, still there are a lot of you know human errors are happening, and uh, the procedure is not followed. No micron filter cartridge inside the housing actually. This is a big challenge actually. The material passes through, and after a fading, you know we come to know that no micron filter cartridge is not housed at all actually. The warning not followed. You know this all coming to the you know extremely smart and. Uh, inappropriate handling of bpas entry miss in the log and a delay in reporting the operations in the electronic system and in terms of warehouse material label and and material dispensing is a major concern the uh, errors in the uh, warehouse inappropriate dispensing inappropriate segregation of material you know incompatible material you know, uh, storing together actually. in terms of it they fail to perform the data backup assigning of duplicate ip addresses power supply interruptions and change in the it policies and you know without uh, assessment of application software poor use of password policies and unauthorized data access performing activities you know without approved issuance copies inappropriate privileges without approved request these are the major challenges in terms of engineering uh, with judge of the balance the life of spare during a during preventive maintenance you know uh, the people you know which judge uh, uh, the balance life of the spares not changed which may lead into a breakdown you know inter inter utility intermixing is a mix a big challenge actually mixing of brine with the chill water and the change in setting the thermocouple controller missing the uh, missing calibration tags failed to ensure operational efficiency standard system um, missed to change the um, the user point filter in nitrogen system as per the frequency missed to ensure access and contain in the nitrogen inappropriate tool used for the specific equipment a good example is actually in the glass and reactor inappropriate tool is used actually there is a possibility Break of the breaking of the glass and reactor. Okay, so since we have seen all the examples, as I mentioned, actually it's possible in your organization, it may not be possible. And you must have experience, not experience, but these are the possibilities. Now, how do you categorize the, all these in, in errors into uh, you know human errors? You know? There are two types of uh, you know categorization. So one is the errors are happen inadvertently. Unintentionally or advertently, that is intentionally happens. Now let us look at actually what is unintentional errors. In unintentional errors, there are two types. One is action not as planned, action as planned. Action not as planned is our errors, and action as planned are mistakes. Okay. Now actions not as planned is an attention gap. in the attention gap for the sub category could be you know slip of action it could be a omission of a certain step it could be inattentive to work it could be laziness uh, or passive the second category is actually lapse of memory it should be a short term memory 
absent mindedness or memory gap or forgetfulness i'll give an example of actually omission of certain step maybe probably delay in recording operations cleaning not done as per the sop no needle washing okay and not reporting on you know, in time missed entries in electronic system signature missed in attendee to walk could be and during a critical operations and the operator left the operations and meet uh, may lead to a temperature excursion or not monitoring the cpp appropriately the sampling error the, the you know wrong charging actually you know and quantity verifications in terms of a quality control in the in attendee to work is actually peak identification improper identification inappropriate sampling labeling and stability sample packaging or the stability uh, pull mistakes in terms of uh, you know mm, uh, in terms of uh, uh, laziness uh, laziness the critical operations monitoring miss uh, during a distillation pumping of uh, reaction mass emulsion formation are not uh, you know uh, appropriately monitored and sampling delays you know and lod temperature monitoring is not done in a quality control environment roi uh, residue on ignition we have to do it for 30 minutes don't do it appropriately those things are possible in a laziness in terms of last lapse of memory short term memory while doing operations actually you know and uh, uh, the guy who is uh, handling a uh, two operations or a uh, hplc guy is using a uh, three hplc you know there is a possibility of short term memory of because he is handling a different product at different time you know wrong batch selection uh, wrong operation number selection in electronic system or writing in the Uh, you know in the bprs or in uh, analytical raw data sheets you uh, know and, uh, and uh, dispensing not as per the requirement maybe auto pipet handling you know rinsing of glassware and mistress fornicate in terms of absent mindedness yes filter not fitted and uh, improper governing in proper sampling you know improper sampling for uh, you know uh, toc and you uh, know labeling errors and wrong charging could be you know uh, absent absent mindedness because of that uh, these errors can happen in terms of memory gaps actually and uh, preventive maintenance uh, skipping stability steady pull out monthly backups and mistook clean that no as per the so okay now coming to the next uh, uh, this one actually is the rule based mistakes in you know, action as planned or mistakes okay and uh, there are two types one is uh, you know understanding gap other one is proficiency or skill gap in terms of rule based mistakes understanding of course You know, it, it could be a learning gap. It could be ineffective training. It could be jumping into conclusion. It could be incorrect decision. It could be adequate, inadequate procedure. It could be inappropriate judgment or complex procedure, ambiguous and lengthy instructions. So some of the examples like a learning gap. Actually, the revision of SOP was not referred by the guy. You know, although he has given a training, actually not uh, referred appropriately. You know, the control addition actually you know has to be done in a manufacturing area. You know, he knows about it actually. You know. and uh, i know how are is not verified actually you know or uh, you know not done appropriately improper selection of equipment type of agitator you know uh, for the uh, for the batches actually which and uh, uh, and uh, ph electrode we kept it in a dry condition or in water absorbed portion of you know pipettes ineffective training so some examples like you know uh, glassware contamination glassware uh, you know Uh, um, uh, cleaning procedures not appropriately uh, given training to the people. Software operations, uh, LOD bottles actually you know the appropriate uh, type of bottle not used or actually you know use of silica crucible versus uh, you know uh, platinum crucibles. Okay. Now the third actually is in the mm, uh, jumping into conclusion. The jumping on people you know uh, into come conclusion like you know peak uh, uh, label appropriately not done actually. Uh, no RRT variations not taken in place actually is the jump into conclusion wrong labeling has done it wrong integration and layer separations in terms of uh, inadequate uh, procedures actually and uh, no clarity in the specific uh, timings no clarity in the BPR for the UTT operations uh, so these are the inadequate procedures which lead to a you know understanding uh, gap of a person which may lead to a failure next is on the um, uh, Uh, inappropriate judgment inappropriate judgment by the people you know uh, may happen in terms of uh, um, you know, uh, you know uh, layer separations uh, in case of a layer separations in, you know he feels that actually the layers uh, you know separation he has done it appropriately um, and uh, residual volumes of the reaction or peak integration 
those are the examples uh, for uh, inappropriate judgments uh, uh, you know uh, lead to a failure of the patches now in terms of a complex procedures you know uh, work up the sample the samples will need to be worked up in a uh, prnd before submitting a quality control if it's not done appropriately you know and um, uh, and some of the cases like you know he has to integrate uh, 50 peaks in a, in a development environment uh, you know uh, that is not uh, uh, appropriately mentioned actually the disregard limits and all so he has done a wrong integration uh, those things actually can be taken into the complex procedures and ambiguous and lengthy instructions like you know in the layer cuttings uh, sorry in in terms of a uh, uh, column chronography there are you know we need to take uh, uh, the pure fractions and um, uh, impure fractions separately and mixing the uh, 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 the material to take it to the next level those uh, you know lengthy instruction may lead to a um, the failure and uh, ambiguous instructions like you know sonication is mentioned in the stp however it's not mentioned how how many hertz you are to yes it could be 50 it could be 100 so these are the uh, you know examples of uh, you know understanding gap led to these uh, various uh, subcategories in terms of a skill gap uh, it could be a inadequate knowledge for assigned a job you know the guy is assigned normal you know working in a uh, operating environment has been suddenly put into hydrogenation although as given training it's not appropriately you know um, you know uh, having an adequate inadequate knowledge meet lead to a failure or maybe he has been put into lyophilizer mix compound the yeah, guy who is working in a fermentation is putting in you know, put into the normal chemical or uh, guy who is working in a sampling has been put into an xpc laboratory like actually you know those things actually you know inadequate knowledge of uh, for the assigned job could lead to a failure and inappropriate allocation of the job you know like for example since because of the uh, you know the absenteeism uh, you know you uh, you know you give a lot of work to him actually it may lead to a failure no actually the guy can handle two actually three actually is you you assign a more number similarly in a production environment you know you can handle two equipments to be a reactor or centrifuges you are like it more then it could lead to a failure and poor analytical ability again there are a lot of examples can you know it could be a column washing you know or a gradient uh, Mm, uh, area uh, where uh, there are peak appear appears actually how do we uh, you know negate it or take it actually or uh, the peak appearing in the wide 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 volume how to take it actually to transfer the sample from low level of uh, mobile phase you know and uh, uh, low uv methods will have a, a lot of noises whether we have to proceed further or not actually uh, those judgments uh, errors are uh, literally a failure actually you know and in terms of a, a, a poor analytical ability like you know the material passing through you know uh, the centrifuges actually with judgmental uh, error also can happen actually the quality is operation requirement uh, may lead to a failure and uh, in terms of applying a concept incorrectly you know and uh, like for example in a quality control integrations you know, um auto integration so what type of uh, peak width they also select uh, those things you know our uh, peak areas heights uh, you know those things actually will lead to a failure and uh, method selections uh, method creation errors utility operations uh, and uh, you know and also applying a concept like in a production environment the selecting of a condensers like it could be there's a requirement maybe for a graphite condenser or ss condenser whereas we use a glass condenser it could lead to a failure and uh, selection of uh, you know equipment uh, you know type of agitators uh, could lead to a failure now these all uh, uh, in advertent now we'll talk about advertent uh, uh, you know, intentional errors there it could be you know uh, divided into three parts you know one is the routine violation or situation violation exception violation the routine routine violation could be because of the personal attitude fail to correct the problem and physical and mental limitations example of personal attitude could be you know you know um the cleaning filter not done duplicate the preparations not done you know we have not followed it he has not followed a glp use the scrap papers you know? and uh, in terms of a fail to correct the problem you know the changing of the uh, the silica in a you know uh, in a you know kf and a reactor not cleaned but he has released for the uh, you know production and you know, line clearances he has given you know and one of the example which i uh, would mention here basically is in a gc environment uh, we have to inject 0.2 microliters you know the stp says you have to use 5 microliters syringe or 2 microliters syringe you know all along the, you know the, we have been doing it with the 10 microliters is a is a routine you is going actually we you know but we are not you know, we are not correcting it actually. no and uh, 
next is actually on the uh, mental uh, limitations this also actually it uh, lead to a you know limitation thinking beyond actually in case of any issue comes actually the guy is not able to think beyond which also you know uh, uh, which also lead to a failure actually the next is on the situation violation uh, you know he may have a problem with a uh, you know, family or in a office environment you know and uh, which may lead to a he may be a, you know um, the good guy but actually the, that particular situation will lead to a you know behave differently and uh, do a mistake actually like a psychological state or unjustified work allotment in terms of a psychological uh, you know state you uh, may do a you know do a destruction of sample do an intermixing of it inappropriate sample mixing you know you know stp deviation and uh, you know and uh, you know uh, you may do it uh, from a back dating or something actually kind of a I think which you do it in terms of a, in unjustified work you will try to deviate from the procedure or writing and you may not record some operations and the contamination process the exceptional violations are the uh, you know that dangerous one uh, because you know if uh, a person's intention is to harm definitely he will do harm actually, depending on the you know so uh, the exception violations uh, you know uh, like you know uh, the guy may do it uh, uh, intentionally uh, with you know it related uh, failures he may do it uh, intermixing of the different product uh, he may uh, lose a uh, you know a yield and uh, uh, wrong integration uh, wrong material charging all these things actually you know he, he may do it intentionally adverse mental state again it is uh, you know uh, will lead to a out of specification not reporting kind of a thing or it could be a, a whistle blowing case also whistle blowing cases i would here i would just like to mention here basically you know uh, when a company started uh, doing it uh, you know um, uh, it's, uh, this uh, whistle blowing uh, taken by the people in a negative way and start complaining about the managers you know. so probably the company doing it uh, you know in a systemic way but however this being used by the people in a negative way and uh, sometimes actually the good behavior also may you know um, uh, may lead to a failure for example in a in a uh, audit uh, where the auditor uh, has entered in the quality control area where he has seen one while actually wanted to preserve it up for the next uh, day for uh, investigation by the time you know people got afraid actually because of uh, you know they were discarded uh, similarly the documentation violations are uh, people do it. so this may lead to a problem to the organizations now since we have seen actually if you look at all the you know, let's say inadvertently and, uh, and uh, advertently, and we have subcategorized silpa faction into lapse of memory for attention gap or attention gap, understanding gap, and skill gap. And uh, this is actually on the um, uh, advertent uh, intentional. Okay. Now, how do we inv uh, investigate? Actually, we need to have once the incident is done, we need to have background of the investigation to be written. And you need to a gamma walk the gamma walk is selling on the shop floor you know we need to do it actually and interview you have to do an interview of the people you have to take a photograph evidences through the hypothesis plan uh, for a quality control you know uh, these are the contamination could be the problem or uh, you know uh, um, the sample spillage could be the problem all those hypotheses the probable loss causes you have to uh, narrate and uh, do all the hypothesis and negate actually all what is not there and uh, prove that actually this is the right root cause. And do uh, once it is proven actually then you need to go back with the Wi-Fi analysis or any other appropriate tool. And uh, you can do a human error checklist, you can uh, define checklist, you can have it. And uh, uh, root cause as mentioned in my uh, previous uh, slides actually which category it belongs. It could be understanding, it could be a skill gap. Uh, it could be a procedural gap it could be a behavioral gap and uh, you need to work on the you know uh, give a impact on the product or risk on the systems you need to define and uh, corrective prevent actions to be proposed and the applicability of the kappa in terms of a department or site specific or global we need to now coming to our uh, kappa this is a major part actually in the we are struggling and uh, for each category, I have uh, given a kappa. It could be, uh, it, it's not a very comprehensive. You may add more actually or uh, delete uh, whatever uh, required. Actually. In terms of attention gap, the subcategories are as we have seen actually, it could be omission of a certain step, inattentive work, laziness, absent mindedness, memory gap, or forgetfulness. 
the, what are the possibilities in it could be overloading it could be improper allocation of work it could be change in daily routine job it could be inadequate infrastructure it could be resource management or fatigue what are the actions to be taken like an capacity to be prepared appropriate work allocation equal and sharing of the job allocation of fixed uh, job on the job training inadequate adequate uh, uh, infrastructure to be provided and introducing a double check introducing a, um, a checklist automation and additional support uh, workflow di displays are do's and don'ts in the workstations in terms of understanding gap uh, the subcategories are learning gap jumping in the conclusion incorrect decision inadequate procedure inappropriate judgment complex procedure ambiguous and lengthy instruction and communication gap the reasons could be ineffective training it could be lack of elaborate procedure or confident and a significant uh, instruction missing in the document and uh, you know um, uh, inappropriate equipment or workplace and the procedure defined without inputs from shop floor inappropriate activity handout mechanism then what are the capas it could be audiovisual training demonstration training workflow uh, where possible keeping simplified unambiguous work instructions and uh, uh, work areas to be designed with the human factors clean work allocation um, uh, clear work allocation uh, instructions involve the doers in preparation of uh, respective proportions this is a big gap which we are doing it you know the procedures are pushed to the shop floor where there is a lot of understanding gaps the failure happens and simplification of procedures and appropriate activity handover mechanism in terms of proficiency or skill gap it's a, it could be a learning gap you know inadequate knowledge or inadequate you know, inappropriate allocation of a job poor analytical ability applying concepts incorrectly and the possibility could be lack of knowledge lack of decision making lack of confidence not suitable qualified experience for the particular job complex procedures the capas could be technical training appropriate induction training demonstration training allocation of responsibility based on competency visual displays and workflows where possible enabling the cap capability of, uh, on, uh, on the upgradation and uh, encourage on utilizing a knowledge sharing platforms so this is very lacking in our organization most of the organization and continual uh, skill improvement planner to be practiced and in terms of a behavior gap uh, you know the category could be work environment adverse mental state personal attitude routine violation intentional errors psychological state failed to correct problem physical mental limitations there are, the possible reason could be attitude discipline lack of learning bonding uh, team bonding no supervision and habitual violation uh, when uh, you know deficiencies are known to the person but still following incorrect procedures disregarding the rules regulations sops uh, acute medical or psychological illness and what are the actions to be taken motivational training job rotation encouraging in motivational personality development discipline action some cases you need to take a discipline action if it is a too you know uh, um, critical you know moderate or uh, intensify uh, quality culture initiatives you know, and uh, make him or the guy who has done a mistake make him as a an ambassador for imparting and training to all the people so that actually he'll feel, he will give the temper you know the kind of a mistake which he has run it uh, to the all other people so that actually they, it can be you know uh, he is uh, you know he is exposed to the uh, people as well as actually he will realize that the mistake actually when he is exposed to the uh, the, the, the group uh, and then bi policies and uh, procedures now what are the uh, things we need to uh, keep in mind while proposing kappa as mentioned actually this is all i have covered in the earlier slides you know we should be you know thinking about actually keeping a system controls additional checks behavioral change right work uh, to right person training effectiveness equipment limitations workflow availability work allotment adequacy resource bottleneck procedure clarity work culture simplified procedures previous kappa effectiveness no trend report and references performance assessment and management these all we have to keep it in mind while proposing a kappa apart from when you have identified this elements now how do we monitor once you propose a kappa how do you monitor the kappa now this is a very big challenge you know and display the human error learnings in at respective area we have a you know a system called everyday you know human error monitoring mechanism in every area it is all being displayed in the in the boards so that actually everybody in the plant or in a quality control aware of it and see that actually the same mistake is not communicate uh, uh, the, those case studies to you know global sites and monthly report trending of human errors analyze the trend and uh, assess the reduction coming up with the kappa not only you know making a report coming with a uh, you know 
correct and prevent the action comprehensive actions and uh, make a government manner as a part of a quality management review both in the site level and corporate level and the annual assessment and see actually you know how it is getting used and what are the our weak areas now relevance of this uh, human matrix his skill matrix in whatever we discussed on the categorization and the capacity mentioned as i mentioned actually the for five percent of the people innovators you know what kind of everybody will do mistake you know it could be an innovator it could be a refiners it could be a doers it could be a, you know negligent now these innovators actually they may do basically you know kind of an understanding gap the mistake they do it in terms of refiners they may do understanding as attention gap and in terms of doers the followers you know it could be attention it could be understanding it could be a skill whereas in negligent actually may generally do a behavioral gap and uh, passive guys will do all type of mistakes if you understand the workforce it will be easy for you to take you know and it all depends on the company where what is the percentage level how to take the corrective actions and uh, the next is actually in the generation based competition today every generation says actually the next generation is not a very dedicated my generation is okay but if you look at uh, uh, but every generation the next generations lose live better than the earlier generation in terms of a lifestyle in terms of luxury or something and also in terms of uh, other things if you look at the competency indicators like you know uh, process operational compliance adopting new technology multi skilling communication and uh, if you map that old generation mid generation and uh, new generations uh, uh, the process knowledge operational experience company compliance understanding very high in the uh, old generation whereas they don't adopt the new technology and multi skilling communication skills and change they don't accept the changes you know very easy they accept but they you know slow dependability is very high one they take ownership in the culture and the values adoption in the mid generation they do in a moderately in all the areas because they wanted to come to the next level actually you know? and uh, you know the new generation so they, they are, since actually they are new to the industry their process knowledge operation experience compliance understanding is low however they are very good in adapting new technology and uh, multi skilling and communication skills and change acceptance is very good there is dependency and on attention is a big one because actually in other countries is not a big one in india it's very big one because the opportunities are very high and moreover the current generation actually yes uh, you know uh, moving faster than the old generation we need to uh, you know we need to instead of uh, you know cursing the tax we need to accept it and see actually how this we can inbuilt in our uh, the workforce we have a workforce of uh, old and mid generation and new generation the blend together for uh, Uh, technology you know would be very helpful in terms of a complex operations we may have a mid generation new generation very high number for a old you know for a non critical uh, things actually may have a old generation if you understand this uh, you know competency of a, a different generation and inbuilt in that i think uh, the companies can you know reduce the human errors now what is competence competence is nothing but a skill knowledge aptitude and attitude every employee should perform an assigned job and uh, competent uh, their employee should be competent to perform a job and uh, should have an ability to perform now skill is nothing but actually is denote expertise developed in the course of a training and experience it comes as the experience skill is acquired and therefore has to be learned for example technical skills are soft skills in terms of knowledge knowledge is set of facts and principles needed to address the problem both the theoretical and practical in the we 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 learn and uh, abilities you know in our uh, aptitude are naturally good at i'm good at you know mathematics or somebody may be good at uh, music art so these all uh, you know is uh, uh, natural and attitude is nothing but uh, attitude can be a positive or negative you know and uh, if you look at uh, the competency we have a two types one is innate and learned we have a natural ability and we have a personal characters and uh, learned one is actually the knowledge and experience and skills are learned so the competencies and behaviors will give a effective outcome coming to, uh, we also discussed about uh, uh, the current uh, different generation uh, if you look at the training you know effectiveness if 
the training is given through a read and understood basis the retention is only 10% and uh, if the training uh, through a uh, ielts training and uh, instructor led training actually where you talk about it 20% they retain now if you it's all verbal in nature if it is in a visual if you make it as a picture or something actually you know and uh, it is 30% and uh, if it is uh, you know demonstration training actually if you do it it will be a 50% now there is a next level of training actually the experimental training you know? and uh, the experimental training is nothing but a practical training in the shop floor which is you know retained at 70 to 90 percent in if you do it uh, you know either simulation or uh, put it in the directly that is why in the induction training if you uh, put the people in a half a day in the theoretical part and they the, in the practical part put it in the plant or a quality control area the retention is very good they 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 will they will learn fast and do it similarly the training which you are giving now it could be a gmp training it could be a you know the operational training if you do a demonstration training you know experimental training and that will be retaining so the basically you know and another one uh, you know uh, the, the one one thing actually i would like to basically here mention here uh, is uh, we talked about the generation now if you look at the old generation mid generation and the new generation their absorption level of technology is different like or more, moreover actually you know the training requirements also different. for example old generation guy was working in a reactor or hvls for 20 years he may not need a training on hvls operations probably he may have to give a training on what negative uh, things may happen in those areas give a training to the others and probably he made a training on the new you know adapting a new technology or uh, the communication skill the documentations right but whereas the new generation having a good knowledge and adapting a technology you know may require a, you know the process training and the operational training and in terms of a mid generation the training requirement may be different so uh, we need to uh, we are also thinking on the line of a, a div, you know uh, generation based training methodology there is no point in giving a training of operations to everyone in a same manner so that that will give an organization a benefit now what is the way forward way forward from a doer's perspective and in terms of a human errors be attentive to the job uh, keep your personal things and outside of organization follow instructions ensure right first time clarify if any doubt is there this is a big problem if you have any doubt on the uh, operations we don't go, go and uh, get clarified actually and uh, demand for any additional training if required actually. and deviations are acceptable but don't apply to for raising a deviation be transparent learn and accept a multitasking in back a quality culture and adopt a company core values ownership and take the ownership from our responsibility to my responsibility in terms of a, a, the manager level, actually, good in action training to you had to give a good in action to the new enjoinees, identify skills and allocate a work as per the human matrix we are seeing, enhance the supervision, effective resource management, periodic gap assessment in terms of facilities and procedures, and upgrade those things, and train the people of learning and continuous improvement on the people competency, display on the work of workflow, uh, no blame culture. Uh, it doesn't work actually appreciate your colleagues periodically maintain the quality culture identify the generation based training methodology in terms of a management perspective you need to give adequate resource and facility to the uh, operating people continuous improvement on the quality culture initiative culture of transparency we need to create no blame culture continuous strengthening of quality management system uh, and uh, phased automation enhanced training methodologies operational excellence initiatives open house by the top management employee engagement and reward recognition now how do we uh, re reduce the uh, human error identification of team uh, for monitoring human errors and uh, to identify the weakness in the system the, um, then uh, rather than blame culture uh, creating a set of questionnaires for interview and uh, reward and recognition disciplinary actions um, and um, human error trending data based uh, human errors and uh, perform thorough root cause analysis identifying the contributing factors sustainable kappa implementation and uh, instead of only training training only periodic review and sharing of learning human behavior skill matters 
yes human errors can be uh, reduced by you know analyzing the human behavior organization culture inbuilt systemic controls automation and uh, process simplification and management role in conclusion and uh, in case of any incident is concluded the human error we need to negate it's not related to the process or procedural and uh, system based before concluding as a um, as a human error and appropriate classification as we mentioned here attention is it related to attention or understanding or proficiency gap or skill gap or behavior gap and appropriate capas like workflows, simplification of workflow, elaborate procedures, uh, checkpoints uh, in formats, uh, auto alerts, uh, partial automation, uh, a daily monitoring, display of current human errors, case studies would help. And strengthening of training, induction training, and technical training, audio visual based training, and generation based training uh, would help uh, to in improve the skill of the people. And automation at critical operations, both in production and quality control. Uh, and uh, trend in human error periodically, draw learnings and educate all, include human error reduction as agenda item in management review meeting, define reward recognition program, quality culture, continual facility upgradation, quality assurance to be enabler. This is a big point actually. So most of the people's uh, fear in mind is actually you know, if a deviation happens, what happened, you'll have to be, you know, uh, have a, have, you have to do a lot of, you know, investigations and, uh, you know, and the actions are taken. So the QA has to you know, enable those processes and bring in the transfer in the system, handhold the, uh, you know, the employees so that actually this, uh, you know, the fire in mind of the people goes off actually and being an uh, enabler will help to bring a quality culture. Disciplinary guidelines uh, should be in place in case of, uh, you know, behavioral one definitely should be in place for exceptional cases and human skill matrix assessment during an initial recruitment and continuity, continuity, you know, competency enhancement. And the transfer and communication of human errors across the organization. In case of exceptional violations under the category of behavior, you know, this can lead to a data integrity breach and such cases should be handled through a data integrity policy of the organization. Now, how do we inbuilt the quality culture? Through a, you know, as I mentioned, a quality assurance being an enabler, transparency is a core value of the organization, human build, uh, you know, behavior skill matrix, visual displays of the shop flow, and uh, town hall meetings, uh, quality rewards and recognitions, patients first mindset, actually, knowledge enhancement opportunities, and employee engagement programs. With that, actually, we can bring the quality culture. Now, if you, we have seen the different generations, uh, different, uh, you know, although we have a lot of uh, human errors happening, you know, and look at the drug development medicine cycle actually. It took uh, almost 3,200 years to bring the smallpox and polio, you know, and uh, cholera took 2,300 years, missiles, you know, and uh, 1,471. Rubella, 352 years, and HIV, 15 years, took Ebola took five years. Currently in the COVID situation, we don't have this much luxury of years to do in those all these human errors in terms of uh, uh, if you look at actually the uh, research cycle actually like you know basic research preclinical development clinical trials apart from the manufacturing we talked about uh, any kind of a uh, this gaps it could be attention it could be understanding it could be a skill it could be a behavior would uh, hamper the um, uh, the drug development cycle coming into usage in the and uh, what are the takeaways from uh, it's very difficult to cover in one year one hour i think uh, i have tried to cover the takeaways are understand our people execute generation based competency evaluation human error categorization to have effective kappa proactive assess uh, the common gaps in various areas practice a simple action to mitigate common attention gaps trend your weak areas continuously monitor the action and their impact make the accountability and responsibility fixed Finally, see the tip in the human It's like a human error, like, you know, cutting our own branch. This is, with that, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, uh, Dr. Uday.
Dr. Uday, I think we are on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. okay. Slightly, slightly, ten minutes more, but it's fine. So let's let's go with the questions. Let me get the questions tab here. One minute. Uh, yeah, here is the questions tab. Yes. Okay. So here is one question. There are several questions, so I'll just uh, select ones which you know uh, which are common ones. So there are several things which are saying you know that uh, this is an excellent presentation. You have gone in depth about all different kind of errors, classification of errors, and uh, how to overcome the human errors. Uh, so is it possible you know for you to give one example? where there was a human error how it was investigated and how uh, you came to a satisfactory conclusion yeah so there are several as i mentioned actually you know um for example i'll uh, tell you one uh, uh, so on contamination you know uh, during a related substances uh, uh, analysis okay and we have there are three batches we have uh, analyzed so one batch is failing uh, in uh, impurity you know, we got a you know uh, additional uh, peak, which is uh, it's not intended actually. And uh, um, uh, this uh, this uh, as I mentioned, I have shown one uh, uh, the photograph of uh, the complexity of uh, how many number of dilutions to be prepared. Okay, and uh, uh, we have, uh, you know we started with the gamba and saying that actually uh, our SOP says that actually you have to keep or preserve all the samples unless uh, until uh, we have uh, released the batch. So the gamba work was uh, done actually segregated all those uh, the plast the dilutions made and all and um, uh, and identified actually you know uh, those plastics used for each batch the all three batches. And as a part of it, actually, you know, um, as a retesting and uh, all the solutions were uh, we taken a protocol and uh, see actually the retest uh, to be for a confirmation. Uh, we have the same solution was used and confirmed that there is a contamination uh, in that particular uh, um, particular uh, analysis, particular batch. And we went back actually on the what are the other samples analyzed during that period in the laboratory. Okay. And uh, what kind of actions we were taking, you know, the solutions that they were preparing, it's very nearby, or how many, you know, the beakers are used, and all. And uh, we found that actually there is one beaker which is used was contaminated, you know, and, uh, you know, used by the people was uh, contaminated uh, with the, uh, the other molecule. And uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, done the hypothesis of uh, this actually the probable causes we have narrowed the refined probable causes narrowed on one is contamination or uh, uh, you know contamination from the beaker, contamination from the pipette, contamination from the uh, you know contamination from the um, uh, volumetric flask. All those things actually we put down, and uh, for each hypothesis we have experimental plan was made uh, to see actually where the contamination happened. Finally, it, uh, it you know from the uh, uh, from the uh, you know uh, the uh, from the actually the beaker which was used actually was a contaminated uh, hypothesis unless to be proved that actually it has come from the uh, the beaker. So we have negated all other areas, the four areas, narrowed down that uh, the beaker contamination, and. Uh, we have done the retest uh, analysis actually you know retest uh, uh, the multiple analysis done actually as per the sop by the different analysts and confirmed that the material is not failing finally you know it was att uh, attributed to the attention gap of the person who was you know wrong beaker selection during the sample preparation so this was actually a, a, you know the classic case uh, where you would do a multiple uh, sample preparations there is a possibility of contamination and uh, uh, concluded with the, uh, the, uh, the attention gap. Now, what, as a kappa, as I mentioned, actually, what we have done basically, we have segregated the area, you know, and given a separate trees for the each batches and the standards, so that actually, the, uh, apart from the training, actually, these all have been, you know, implemented in a quality control environment, so that 
in future there is no contamination happen number one number two appropriate labeling processes was uh, uh, implemented and third is actually and uh, the whatever this kind of a you know the complex operations are there the yeah, assessment was done for the molecules and uh, come out with the uh, you know uh, uh, the segregation of the areas and the segregation of the glasswares, so all those was implemented as a kappa, not only for the training. This is the one classic example I can quote. Thank you, thank you. Uh, now, you know, uh, there are several questions which are, you know, basically asking uh, that will regulators accept human error as a root cause? Because if you see many warning letters which are there, this is the main contention, main issue that human error has been identified as a root cause and many of these 483s or in these warning letters, it has not been accepted, you know, uh, somehow. Yeah. So to answer your question, as I mentioned in the, uh, in the beginning, the regulators, you know, the regulations also says that actually, you know, the human error is possible. Mm, I'll go back to my slide, you know, and if you look at the, uh, the guidelines, are you able to see the guidelines, uh, slides? Yeah, yeah. We are able to see your slides, yeah. so you have to see which, yeah, yeah. which number. No, yeah, that, is just, uh, I mean, that is fine. That is fine. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the regulation also says that actually before concluding on human error, you have to negate it is not related to process or procedures and system error. So uh, to answer your question, actually, there is no right or uh, no uh, right or wrong answer for this. Yes, it all depends on the auditors. No, as a company, if you, uh, you know, uh, uh, put all the trends of, uh, as I mentioned in the presentations uh, and take actions, uh, reduce the number of human errors, you come to a certain stage actually where you have understood the human errors and brought down those mistakes to a certain level, actually, still there could be a human error possible. If you demonstrate that, in my opinion, the auditors will accept that. Again, it all depends on the auditor. I, we cannot say that which auditor will accept as a human error is okay with me or not okay with me. So there is no right or answer for this, uh, is my opinion. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> now again, there are several questions and I'm just collating them. Is, you know, suppose you find human error and because of that, you're invalidating the original result. And you know, second, second result, third result, or fourth, fourth result, based on your SOP, it is continuously meeting the specification. Then, will regulators accept if you invalidate the original result? And if so, what is the procedure to be? What is the correct procedure to be followed, which would be acceptable to the regulators? Uh, as I mentioned, actually, anyway, you see, if you are proving that actually the initial result. Uh, is invalid you need to invalidate the original result report the uh, the result which you have got as a the confirmatory analysis now what is uh, actually you need to scientifically prove as i mentioned you need to hypothetically hypothesis unless you have to do what could have happened in the the first analysis and prove scientifically saying that this contamination could be a issue in terms of assay, actually, there is a less number, less quantity of the sample was uh, the reason for the failure, actually. If you prove that in the hypothesis analysis, this is the exact reason. For example, I'll tell you, in an assay calculation, you know, there is a batch failed, you know, has got uh, some areas. Now, in a hypothesis analysis, you said, actually, there is a spillage of, a, uh, you know, the, the crystal, which has led to a failure. Now, you have a correlation of, actually, a number of the milligrams versus area, actually, which has led to a failure. Now, if you prove that uh, to be the reason for that, and while handling how it would have happened and uh, you know and uh, what are the uh, you know corrective preventive actions you are going to take in future like you know if you're using a butter paper like instead of that you know boat you know the samplers if you use it actually there you can avoid that kind of a, you know the spillages uh, um, something you know if you prove that you know this is the exact reason for a failure and as well as actually we are taking an appropriate corrective action and uh, you can invalidate the initial result and release the batch. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, now, what are your views on behavioral risk management for human error 
in quality risk management metrics. Would you be able to comment on this? Would you like to comment? Yeah. Uh, if you uh, in the behavioral, as I as, as I mentioned, actually there is very type of in a behavioral. You know, it could be actually a, a routine violation. You know, or um, you know, it could be a, a, a event based actually. You know, particular uh, you know, uh, event based. Uh, the guy was. Uh, uh is not happy with uh, his boss and that particular day of work allocation or uh, something actually it all uh, happens in a uh, various area uh, various uh, times actually so what we need to basically is actually you know we need to uh, map this uh, behavior into uh, skill actually whether it, the guy is uh, 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 is related to the misbehavior uh, human matrix or not actually is it because of the work environment or adverse mental state, personal attitude, routine violation, or those things actually if you map it and you can uh, narrow down the possible causes, probable causes. It could be a, uh, it could be a, you know, uh, no supervision for him actually. It led to a, uh, that uh, behavior or it could be, a, you know, um, uh, he's a habitual in, uh, you know, violating the rules um, um, or, uh, or actually his attitude or his, Basically, a indisciplined guy, you know. Those, uh, if you do, if you map that actually, then you can take a, uh, a, a you can uh, move him from the critical operations to non-critical operations. Or he has done a adverse uh, uh, any activity in the organization, and you can take action, disciplinary action on him also through a risk assessment. So, if you look at my presentation um, here, also I mentioned actually what actions can be taken in the uh, human behavior. Yeah, it could be a routine violation, as I mentioned. Actually, personal attitude, uh, fail to correct the problem, physical, mental limitation, psychological state. If you categorize that, then the corrective prevent actions it can be taken appropriately. Also, I mentioned actually in the uh, presentation. Uh, Uh, the kappa also I have mentioned in my presentation what kappas can be proposed. Uh, is it moving? Uh, my slide is moving. Yeah, you are on human error categorization. Yeah. So if you look at uh, the kappas, yeah, behavior. Yes. There. You know, you can take a you know. Uh, uh, this you can use a, well, it could be a motivational training it can be a job rotation i mentioned uh, as i also mentioned actually make him as ambassador you know he so that he will feel you know uh, for his uh, guiltiness or uh, he will feel guilty of uh, his mistake and uh, you know he will never do the mistake also instead of uh, punishing actually this also can help in some of our cases uh, and some cases actually is uh, you know never worked out some of those cases actually you have taken a discipline action on the people also as per thank you. thank you and uh, so are, motivation training also would help you yeah. there are several questions you know like you you mentioned that intentional uh, human error uh, and you know how and then how can you correlate this with data integrity issue will the regulators look at intentional uh, mistakes in, in uh, you know any action which is done intentionally as a data integrity issue and how do you differentiate between this when you are investigating yeah so um if, uh, if you look at the examples i'll just go back to my presentation again in my presentation i have mentioned uh, sorry i'm just having a problem in moving my slide just give a minute actually i will go to I mean, a problem. No, it's okay. You can just explain it thoroughly without the. Oh, yeah, I will explain. If you look at uh, the, the three type of uh, intentional errors, sir. Uh, um, one minute. Just a minute. I'm just taking out a particular slide. I'm not uh, able to move that slide. Take your time. Take your time. No issues. So. 
which are one is a thing the routine violation i talked about and situation violation and exception violation okay so this is uh, as i mentioned like for example you know the guy was not uh, you know entered uh, the uh, operations on time now it could be actually uh, taken as a data integrity as well as actually in the uh, under uh, this uh, you know um, fail to correct the problem also because he has not uh, uh, done that appropriately so okay so it uh, how we have to document basically is if it is a continuously happening by the individuals then it will become a data integrity if it is one of cases like you know he has missed to operation because actually he is in a you know unjustified work or uh, condition because of the uh, physical condition then we will include we, we can uh, talk about this condition in the investigation and say this is not related to data integrity it is a uh, situational based or one time if it happens by the individuals continuously that will come in the trend and say that yes he is the habitual of continuously deviating procedure and may de de lead to a data integrity so we can we can conclude in that way also thank you now there is a question about this you know uh, many of the times the procedures are not very clear specifically in uh, quality control laboratories uh, for analysis and in such cases you know you, when you get an error it is then pointed out to uh, the laboratory uh, the, the procedures so how okay. how would you you know and you get an os so what will be the expectation of a regulator uh, in such a such an os yeah. so here if the person has given an example say for example suspension sample bottles if it is not shaken properly if it is if the sample is not taken properly you would get an error so okay. what you know how will you address this kind of errors and this kind of issues yes sir. okay it's a good question actually as i mentioned actually uh, like uh, earlier also in my ex uh, examples i have given an example of sonication like he is talking about a you know shaking of the sample dissolution of this all happens in a stp which is which says only uh, you know the sonic you had to sonic at the sample it doesn't say that at the, what you know hertz you have to use how many minutes use actually in those cases and uh, there is a possibility of failure and uh, which may not be you know catched by the the analyst now uh, this cases again um, uh, you know uh, we have to substantiate with the hypothesis analysis by doing different uh, sonication methodologies like a different uh, you know um, uh, hertz uh, and the times uh, and prove that actually this is because of the inadequacy in the uh, the standard testing procedures which led to a failure and uh, as a corrective remedy action the standard testing procedures are you know uh, changed uh, to incorporate this uh, processes that will be sufficient thank you uh now you spoke about hypothesis testing so he, here is a question on hypothesis testing how what you know how would you do hypothesis testing in case of a dilution error so do, doctor just one comment there are several questions so you know when when you are answering if you can be little brief so we'll be able to address more uh, more questions because uh, i see more than 50 60 or 70 i have not counted them several questions so we'll try mm -hmm. to answer different kind of questions as many as possible because people okay. have really liked and loved your presentation yeah no maybe they can you uh, know write to me i can answer the questions because in a, as i mentioned this is a topic where uh, a uh, lot of debates uh, you know uh, to be debated there is no right or uh, wrong answer for this it all depending on the situation correct we have to be so, in that situation to take a call actually because we cannot guess and do it if i am in the situation then we can take a call people can write to me and i can answer the question this is my email sure. id yeah but we'll we'll still take still there is time we can take another maybe 10 15 minutes questions if you are okay yeah, yeah i'm okay with that yeah so this is an hypothesis testing for dilution error yes again uh, as i mentioned actually the gamba observations were going to be very important when you do you know um do a, a gamba walk and understand actually there is a dilution error uh, uh, is possible and not only dilution error and other errors possibility you have to put like a probable causes 
and uh, narrow down to actually in negate all other areas and narrow down to uh, the the dilution error the dilution error may happen in a different way as i mentioned actually uh, you know i have shown in the picture there are a lot of uh, dilutions are involved okay and uh, you have to use a, a bulk pipette or a, a, the micro pipettes and you are not uh, you know aspirated properly you know you have to keep it in a 45 degree and uh, aspirate it and uh, while dispensing actually you have to do it at 90 uh, you know 90 degree and uh, dilutions uh, you know is not done appropriately taken a solution uh, uh, properly or you have exceeded the dilution of you know 20 ml or 10 ml whatever is there actually do this actually as a uh, you know hypothesis and uh, take a photographic evidences i know from the original solution you will get an area and the hypothesis area also you will get an area compare those things actually and prove that actually this is the exact reason for the uh, failure it could be dilution you know um, uh, dilution ex uh, excess or uh, um, lower or actually you know uh, contamination whatever actually is there actually if you can prove that with the hypothesis and uh, comparing the areas of what you have uh, uh, identified as a probable cause yes definitely we can prove that actually. probably the area differences could be very minimal if it, this, this have, we have done it in a several area cases and uh, um, and actually uh, we have proved that actually this is the exact reason for a failure in dilution areas of standard and sample if you start comparing it you will get a very good number one number two you apply the why why analysis uh, while dilution error why dilution error in the dilution what activity were done it which led to a you know the dilution error it could be a aspirate cushion or it could be a dispensing or it could be a you know excess dilution or whatever actually you know or it could be a uh, inappropriate dilution uh, um, sample you are taken uh, those things actually if you put that put it in a hypothesis start comparing the area of sample and standard the initial analysis hypothesis analysis who exactly this is what exactly happened this will solve the problem thank you uh no there are many uh, errors or many issues seen because of backdated entries all of us face this problem so how how do you ha handle the backdated entries uh <laughs> <laughs> see, that data cannot be handled. You have to, you have to follow. See, today, as I mentioned, the data integrity. As Indian companies were getting warning letters, I think we have, we have got a good controls on the um, uh, the software uh, part. Now, people intentionally cannot do anything in the software which you have put on control. Now, second part on the, you know, the. Uh, backdating by the people again it's all uh, handled through uh, you know uh, as i mentioned actually is uh, uh, the small uh, you know errors is possible you have to give a confidence to the people yes possible there's nothing wrong people do a back entry because you know they have a fear of doing a investigation documentation people the batch will not get released those things actually are the reasons for that actually if it feels enough say that this is a you know small for example a distillation entries have to happen once in a hour if one hour 15 minutes happens there's nothing wrong in it actually okay you can do a risk assessment and say if it is not temperature exceeded actually they can you can always release the batch with a risk assessment if you give that confidence in the transparency in reporting actually those uh, uh, those uh, incidences uh, will give confidence to the people so that actually they can do it uh, uh, do it in uh, on time as well as actually the back dating actually is unacceptable behavior we have to make it very clear to the people you know and uh, um, it's a data integrity issue at the culture you have to pre create there is no data integrity uh, you know uh, should be acceptable in a uh, pharma industry so most of the companies we uh, have a data integrity declaration on the day of joining that he will not be indulging in any data integrity in our organization number one number two regular training vigorous training and uh, you know um, and the shop floor QA concept we brought in to educate the people what, what, what is very important for the organization if you do like this actually. You know. I'll give you one example you know, um, of uh, this incident. Uh, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, we, were, we were in a like, European audit and um, uh, 
the guy has uh, the auditors entered the drawing area went to the different area while entering into the uh, area they have seen the uh, the batch record it was at 11 o'clock uh, in the morning when the uh, the 11 o'clock the entry was to, was to be made and uh, they moved to a different area in that area nothing nobody was there actually and uh, uh, while coming back actually you know somebody entered and uh, they have done an entry okay we came back at 11 uh, 20 but the entry was made as 11 o'clock now this is a big issue actually because the auditor has seen the batch record it's 11 o'clock there's no entry that's fine actually there's nothing wrong in it the guy was not available he came back at 11 20 you know this has given a big issue down to the organization actually which is not acceptable this is not acceptable practice probably actually you must have thought actually you know uh, you know if uh, no entry is there we won't go to we're going to get a you know 403 or something so that is the reason actually we need to create a you know awareness and quality culture we need to bring in back entries not acceptable thank you thank you now training is always coming up as a corrective action however with training it's never guaranteed that the issues wouldn't happen again. So is training for human error really an effective kappa? Uh, as I mentioned, you know, this is only a correction actually. The training for the, uh, the guy who has uh, uh, done the mistake, training for that particular area people and apart from that actually, you know, uh, the whole department, the training is a must. There is no, no, there is because it has to be communicated to them. There is a mistake happened. This is how it has happened, and the training to be imparted to take care in future doesn't happen. Number one. Uh, number two, in case of actually the training, as I mentioned, the effective training can happen if it is a demonstration training is done. Probably, you know, uh, the guy, you know, give a training on a oral basis, uh, and uh, without demonstrating, this is the next. Uh, uh, error happened. Uh, this is how the, the sample to be handled. This is how uh, the sampling to be done. This is how the labeling to be done. If you don't demonstrate it, uh, then it, the effectiveness is not going to work. Uh, uh, training, yes, definitely is required, but it's only a corrective action. It's not a preventive action. And uh, you have to take a preventive action of systemic correction uh, apart from training. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, you know, there are many errors where you have BMRs or uh, batch production records where uh, certain pages are missing. Yes. How, how you know, would you handle this? Uh, through risk assessment, we'll have to make it uh, an impact assessment. Uh, and see, see, some of the companies, what we have, uh, you know, implemented uh, in-process quality assurance uh, where, you know, the quality assurance in the software verification, they do it. Uh, still, it is, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it happens and uh, page missing or solvent spillage in the batch records where uh, uh, the legibility of the entries are not, uh, you know, uh, entries are not okay. So you take a deviation and say that actually in uh, what is the quality impact on this uh, particular uh, batch? Is there any deviation happened through a, and the interviews of the operators? You can uh, do that, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, impact of the in the quality, you know, impact in the operations, all those things, if you inbuilt in the investigation, if there's no quality impact uh, uh, through a risk assessment, you can always take action. Or, or then uh, action would be in an electronic batch record kind of a thing. You can go as a preventive action in future. However, in an API environment, yes, it's a challenge, and uh, but it can be addressed if it is not intentionally, you know, uh, taken out uh, uh, those pages. Thank you. Uh, how to control bad behavior or intentional behavior uh, while handling data? You know, many times. You see people which is done intentionally bad behavior to settle some scores and other things. What could be the way dismissing such an employee or any other way? What What is your recommendation? Um, this is a very, there's no right or wrong answer to this question as mentioned. You know, um, this uh, as I was talking about a vision growing, you know, when a company started, you know, whistleblowing a policy to improve our the transparency. What happened actually? People, you know, uh, they started complaining about uh, the managers' behaviors uh, and other things. Okay, and uh, so in those cases, actually, what uh, we started doing basically was 
uh, we started uh, you know the shop floor quality assurance uh, the quality culture programs we started uh, and the no blame culture you know especially you know even there is a mistake okay fine it's a, if not a repeated actually it's acceptable and uh, you know if there is a big violation make him as an ambassador for that uh, you know the problem and uh, make sure that actually he imparts the training to the others and we also you know started working on the mentorship actually attach somebody if his behavior is not okay attach one mentor uh, to him so that actually he has been mentored to you know behave in appropriate way you know and uh, rewards and recognition program where uh, you know it motivates the people uh, not to do any such kind of activity and uh, uh, as i also mentioned as the qa as an enabler only can change the culture this is still okay the human behavior uh, as i mentioned actually the percentage level of uh, 10 to 15 percent still there is a trouble makers will be there in office environment it could be you know in a government uh, or in a in a society we still we need to uh, take care of that actually through a motivational training as i mentioned and the various measures but uh, thank you i don't think we will completely eliminate this part because we need to live with this all kind of a people in the work environment thank you thank you so now see there are several questions so like you said your email id is there people will ask them to connect with you we'll just take last one question and with that we'll close this uh, today's uh, educational session which was really appreciated by several several of the delegates so my compliments and my congratulations to you doctor so the last question what you will take is uh, you know we talked about a lot of methodologies and doing the root cause analysis and then kappa but in practical in the real life situation is very difficult to come at a root cause how how would you handle this you know we have seen many of us have seen that handling root cause is really difficult yes i agree actually you know if you understand our problem in various areas as i mentioned here the probable cause for a failure is, if the possible cause for a failure is, if you know if you're very good at it actually and and start working on how the people have to you know uh, work on that particular area it could be hplc it could be this one and uh, document everything like i mentioned actually the workflow and area segregation you know all those things actually you know and will give a work a very good environment number one number two things you have all the possibilities do a so many you know hypothesis analysis and know the trending actually of a uh, type of failures you know if you trend it uh, you will come to know there are a lot of uh, uh, things like you know the, the guy who is doing a mistake in the calculations continuously so then the, the kind of a training is required for him is a entirely different uh, and uh, in some molecule there is a failure happen in system stability some molecules are happening in the you know uh, on the rsd failures are happening in the bracketing standards uh, you know in uh, in some uh, molecules actually the unknown peaks are observed actually you know on and off actually so if you understand your problem you know molecule wise people wise and the method wise uh, i think we have uh, we have a, a solution for it actually if you yes it is very very you know it is easier uh, to say than done but it is doable yes. if you understand the process very well correct thank you thank you so much so with this i think we have we will stop the question and answer and we will stop the session here so dr damodaran thank you very much for an excellent in detail presentation and then answering questions for the last 30 to 40 minutes uh, we could not answer several questions i think around 50 or 60 70 questions are still unanswered uh, your email id uh, is there on this uh, uh, panel uh, in your presentation so i will ask people to get in touch with you directly so with this uh, let me thank all the delegates also for logging in on this sunday morning uh, and uh, uh, making this uh, session a very productive one so with this uh, let me bid a goodbye to all the delegates have a good weekend and Thank log you. on to our website for all the lovely webinars, very uh, uh, webinars which are planned in the next three to four months. So with this, we are closing the uh, webinar. Thank you and bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uday and ISPE. And I would like to thank all the people who have given this experience and uh, Pankaj uh, for helping me to make a presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. With this, we will end the webinar. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah.